So the story behind this is, I was having a conversation with somebody um, about YouTube. And somewhere in there, Monolic 1.5 came up. And Monolic 1.5 segued into how kind of the curse of Bionicle passion projects and how most Bionicle fan projects are never completed. Well, I don't know if that's necessarily specific to Bionicle. I would expect personally that most fan projects of things aren't ever completed, but whatever. Um, and so that segued into which Bionicle fan projects, specifically fan games, were completed. Um, and I brought up Minol, or the Metro Nui online game. It's an example of a fan game that was actually completed. Now, of course, you can't play it right now. And I would like that fixed, but I don't have any power to do that. So it's not accessible to people now to play Minol. But this person that I was talking to... Uh, mentioned something called Bionicle Paracosmos, which was built by the old BZ Power Bionicle Storyline and Theories Forum moderator, Bones 3, or Bones the Third, or Bonesy, or however you pronounced his screen name. Now, I don't think he's really around anymore on BZ Power. I haven't actually checked BZ Power lately because some really stupid stuff happened. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, anyway, before that stupid stuff happened, um, this is something that he made. And I didn't know about until one week ago when I was having this conversation with this person. So, now that I know about it, I'm going to try playing it. Now, out of said person, the information, I, basically this is how they described it. It's really hard, is one is one characteristic. The second characteristic is it's like Bionicle the game is GBA, but hard. And I found that kind of a silly statement because like, wait, is this, that mean it's just like Bionicle the game GBA? End of sentence. Um, and so I asked, is it like platforming hard or is it combat hard? And this person said, it's combat hard. You get killed, man. Well, most video games, you tend to get killed in them, and so quite often. So that's not really very unique. But uh, we'll see what exactly this person meant by you get killed, man, as I will proceed to get killed here. Um, it looks like this was made using RPG Maker 2000 or 2003. I haven't actually downloaded any 2003 games, but it has that uh, RPG Maker 2000 kind of look. Um, it appears it does not need the runtime though. It'll just run out of the box, so that's good. Um, I, so how do you get this game? Well, you get it from somebody who happened to have the files on their computer because they downloaded it a long time ago, which is some way I could have got it because said person I was talking to actually had it on their computer and had the files in person. So I could have gotten them in person. I managed to get them off of somebody who put them on the drop bo Dropbox who is talking with somebody else in some other form too. So you can, you can Google this and you'll get a really remote way of getting the files as well. Uh, it's, kind of, it's, it's kind of a rare hard to come by game these days. It's very obscure. Okay, let me try actually playing this. I have no idea what I'm getting into other than it's probably, it's hard apparently. That's it. It's also built for old monitors around 2000 era. So... It's small on my screen. You can full screen it, but RPG Maker 2000, the way that engine, that uh, um, engine works, it'll mess up the aspect ratio. You can't like full screen it in proportion. When six stones circle a stone map, the map maker's destiny will be revealed. And evil will tremble before the blue fire. Welcome. To the Bionicle Paracosmos. That was a strange dream. How do I move? Oh, arrow keys. Okay, it doesn't do WASD. It only does arrow keys.
Like I said, this is the door, right? I'm hungry. I should eat breakfast. And I should probably skip my backpack before I leave. How do I interact with things? Okay, let me see if I can... I don't know what... Let me try starting this over. Nope, there is no, like, controls menu. Okay, I just have to wing it. Sling over from the, over from the beginning. Oh, I can't skip this? Oh, phooey. Okay, I should have saved just to save my game, just to get around the up opening cutscene. It's very like me. It's a very classic move of mine to have to watch the open opening cutscene over and over again on things. Is there a read me? Maybe that would help. Misconfiguration settings. Okay. No controls though, I don't see I don't see. Great. Wait, is there a folder called read me? Okay, well, I don't like to not know the controls. Oops, what? I missed some dialogue. Oh, fooey. You picked up your energy pack. This special backpack stores objects in energy form, so it can store more than that, more than a cloth pack. View your items in the pause menu. Energy pack. Oh, so is is he trying to give an explanation for the hyperspace arsenal? Or the bag of holding, or whatever you call it? You ate breakfast. 100 EP restored. Can I go out here? Good morning, Hujo. Jala has been waiting for you. There is something he wants to talk to you about. Where am I? Kanoka, Takora, of course, the village of fire. Oh, that's his name. Who is Jala and where is he? Jala is the leader of the Takoro Guard. We protect Takoro from dangerous Rahi. His office is outside. Right now we're on the second floor of the part of Takoro that's carved into the rock. You can get to the first floor by going that way and going down the stairs. There are signs next to the steps and entrances to major hallways that can help. But you, you should already know that. You are the map maker. You know who I am. I'm Kanoka, a member of the Takoronin Guard. Oh, we're saying Takoronin now. So we're going back to the old retro... Um, terminology from the early part of 2001. I always help guard your mapping expeditions to the Lava River, remember? You should probably hurry and go see Jala. It seems urgent. You should ex you should explore around Takoro too. If you have any questions about how things work, ask Taraga Vekama. He's in the hut with the fire staff sign in front. Oh, I almost forgot. Here, take this tablet. Takua saved me. Takua save it to me. Oh, it's gave it. I just, that font's weird enough that I didn't see it to interpret it as an S first. Okay, Takua gave it to me just before he left on his latest adventure. He didn't mention what it was. I don't really want it, so you might as well take it. Maybe you'll be able to figure out what it is. That's called a, that's called a foist.
Can I move now? Okay. Let's go check out that room. There's weirdly nothing in here, okay? Some energy pack I have. Takua's tablet. Can't do anything with it. Uh, okay. Oh, it's RG Arts RPG, isn't it? Okay. We're gonna go the wrong way, just so you know it's over here. What's this troll? Okay. <laughs> Storage room. Locked door. Why does this have to be so long? Okay, so that's my hut, I think. Oh, it's not. Ah, phooey. Hi, Hujo. You had better go see Jal at his office right away. You're late. Anytime you have a goal that you might have forgotten, press the numpad minus to receive an objective message. Okay. <laughs> There's an inscription on this tablet. Remember to save your game often. Strange. I wonder what it means. So that stuff is down, okay. Hi, map maker. That needs to go see Jala. <laughs> I'm Okali. I work in the library and I remember the Takoro guard. I don't know. I just what everyone's saying. It's my pet for Hoto bug racing, Takoro's newest sport. Bye, go see Jala so you don't have to keep reminding you. Why does your hut exist then? Why can I not? Why can't I go into there? Fine. Out of my way, I gotta copy Minog. 
Library. Main hallway, first floor, second floor, basement, level A. Okay. Welcome to the Takoro Library. Please be as quiet as you can. I should recognize this music, but I... I mean, I do... Oh, it's canon in D. <laughs> right? Okay. Eventually, I get to the fast part, but I gotta move on. Takora storage room. Baki shop. Oh, okay, well. I don't need any of that, I don't know why. I, like, hopefully, uh, Oh. Photobug racing. Close for the morning. What is this place before I... Meeting hall. Food. Welcome to Janoku's Takora Kornen style eatery. I'm Rotafi. Would you like your food here or to take with you? Uh, take with me, please. All right, please go to the menu over there to order. I told him again because he's. He doesn't interact. I like this new go see Jala food. It's yummy. Help, I lost my bag of protos. I know I lost it here yesterday, but I can't remember which table it was sitting at. They call them protos. If you bring me a box of paper, I can buy it for 55 protos. Hi, welcome to Janoku's Torkorona style eatery. If you bring me a light stone, I'll buy it for 10, 20 protos. Ah, very mean old like that, all that. Don't eat that. I am Janoku. I run this place. I am the cook. Don't eat, uh, oh, sorry. A lot of people came in, come in here and just take stuff off the trays and ovens. It's become a habit to say that whenever someone comes in here. What are you doing, cooking? Back. I'll bring if you bring me a stone pot, I'll buy it for forty three protos.
Go away, I'm eating. Fine. Gee. What? Why am I... Why is that opening? I'm accidentally hitting the space bar or something. Okay. Busy, busy, busy. I'm collecting solid protodermis from the extractors and monitoring the equipment. Fifteen small box-like devices are extractors. They extract solid pure protodermis from the lava and cool it into cylinders. They are stored in the tables. The two big furnaces in the back take heat from the lava and store it as energy, which is used to power machinery, and recharge heat stones and light stones. Only one of those is running right now. The giant vats to the left back wall store raw lava deposits. And over by the left lower wall, are lava collectors, which are wheeled buckets to hold deposits and scoops to pick them up with all lava poop. Okay. Work, work, work. This guy does not interact. Cool. Do you want to help out with lava farming? How do you farm lava? Take this lava collector. Once you go through this door, you go to lava deposits. Touch them and you'll pick up pick them up with the scoop. Collector will hold the deposit. After a while, another deposit will build up in its place, but in the meantime, you can collect others. When you're done, talk to Tirabamba, who is just outside this door. This door. He'll reward you for your work with four protos to every deposit. Okay, here's your lava collector. How to do this? Uh. Um. Wait, that's it. Okay. Oh. Tunnel to Anukoro currently closed due to unst instability of the Teleko Arch. Okay.
Okay, so that's a oh, sort of Tahu candle shop. Bring me raw sap and pay me 14 protos to give you sap wax. Uh, the island needs machinery, doesn't it? What's it look like I'm doing? Standing around here dancing? Onikor has a huge lava breakout had a huge lava breakout by a lightstone mine the other day. We've closed the path where there just to be safe. When it opens, we'll need a new lava pump. I just completed it. It's over there. If you deliver it to the chief lightstone prospector in Onukoro, I can pay you nine hundred protos. He'll worry he'll he'll worry about installing it. Let's put this in your energy pack and find Te Tehuti in Anukoro. He's already paid me in advance. Just bring back a note from him and I'll pay you. Okay. So far, this has been incredibly boring. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I'm definitely quite bored. Hopefully this gets more interesting at some point. So it looks like Jaller in there. Hey, Hujo, look at this pedestal. It wasn't here yesterday, and now it's here. Weird. It's got some kind of writing on it, and you better read it. When six stones circle a map, the map maker's destiny will be revealed, and evil will tremble before the blue fire. Isn't that pedestal weird? It had, was it wasn't there before wasn't here before, but now it's here. And nobody knows how it got here. You should read what it says. I am Morona. I am the Takoro of the Takoro Guard. In his office. Across the lava bridge. His office is off the east side of the doorway to Tawahi. Stay out of the charred forest. It's way too easy to get lost there. I lost some protos in there once while trying to find my way out. Activate comma. Hello, Matt Maker. If you have any questions about how things work in this game, feel free to ask me. Here we go. Most actions in this game are performed by pressing enter or space. The action keys. You already know what to talk to, that to talk to someone, press an action key when next to them. Action keys are also used for picking up items, entering doorways, reading signs, punching enemies, activating shops and various uses in minigames and chores. Press escape to go to the pause menu. When paused, you have access to several menu options and can check your HP, EP, and your money, money level. 
The items menu shows all the items you have in your backpack and how many of each type of item you have. Use it to check your items or to eat food. Your backpack is a special backpack that stores items as energy, so it can store much more than a cloth bag could, just like packs the Toa have, and several other Tahunga. The status button shows a few more details about party members, or, or you. The save menu also allows you to save your game and one of the 15, in one of the 15 save slots, save often. And finally, the in-game button exits the game. Be sure to save before quitting. As you play through the game, you will have many things to do, places to be, and people to talk to. These goals or objectives can be hard to remember at some, sometimes. To see a reminder message of what your current objective is, press minus on the numpad. When you have earned projectile weapons, you will be able to fire them by pressing shift. The number keys activate various other game commands, depending on where you are and what you are doing. The most important number key command is healing. Once you've drained with Duku, Duku, once you've trained with Dukoi, press zero to heal. When you have earned projectile weapons, you can equip them and switch between them with the number keys. Some mini games or chores can use number keys as well. If they do, you'll, it will be explained if you ask the game's host how to play. Some actions are activated by automatic, automatically when the hero lets you touches something. Passing through some doors or passages or jumping over some gaps are a few examples. One bad kind of hero touch action is when an enemy injures you. Dukoi will teach you how to de deflect these attacks. If you want to avoid injury, stay away from the enemy. Places of importance often have special signs near them, which use a standard system of carving so you can tell at a glance what type of place it is. Tahu, pr provide, Tahu pr pr provided me with a nobi, noble mahihi. I will, however, pr I will project illusions of the signs over my fire pit and tell you what, what each sign means. There are many other types of signs for, for less important places, but there's no standard system for those. I will focus on the standard signs. The general purpose sign for, is for places of importance that don't fall into usual categories. Categorized signs look like this, but with a statue on top. Taraga huts have signs with colored statues of each Taraga's staff. This is my hut sign with a fire staff. This sign stands outside the hut of Taraga no Kama in Gakoro. It's for Taraga no whatever. This is a directional sign. They are placed throughout, the, throughout Koro and sometimes out in the Wahi. They point towards key locations, especially inside each Koro. So this, this sign denotes a restaurant. Buy food at these places to recharge energy. This sign is for the shops. Buy various items at these places, especially ammo for projectile weapons, once you've earned them. This is for mini games. Play these games to earn protos, which you can use to buy food or items. This is, the, this is for inns. Go here to sleep, sleep when you are visiting other, other Koro. And finally, this kind of sign stands near major points of travel, such as ferries or tunnels between Koro. The health and energy system can seem complex, but here it, here it is, all in one place. In your pause menu, HP stands for health points, EP stands for energy points. Health points are what, what they sound like, a percentage of your health. If you have 100 HP, you are healthy. If you lose all your HP, you will die. Energy points are a count of your reserve of energy. This energy can be used for self-healing of the kind of injuries you will encounter in this game. The normal maximum is 200 EP, although the Pokeronians have invented a special type of stone that doubles the maximum EP of its holder. There is no bad side effect of 0 EP, except you cannot heal. EP is recharged by eating food. Buy food at the restaurants in each coral, then go to your items menu to eat a piece of food. Choosing who should eat in your party, stock up on food before battle. Protos are the money system on our island. Each co coin is made out of refined protodermis. Food is our average amount. Food is on average about 30 protos. Items vary in price. You will need protos to survive ultimately, since they are needed to eat. There are two ways to earn protos: mini games and chores. Each Koro has at least two mini games. These games or sports are what the village do for fun. Each is unique and can be played again and again. Winners get protos. How many protos and how they are earned depends on the game. Some games have entry fees. In some, only one winner earns protos. In others, only you play, and your prize money depends on your performance. Directional signs in the coral point the way to minigames. There are also a host of, host of the minigame who will ask you if you want to play if you talk to him or her. 
You can accept, decline, or ask how to play. Each game's instructions are unique, so be sure to ask how to play if your first time, if it's your first time, or if you need a refresher. Another way to earn money is by performing chores for various villagers. This is even more varied than mini games. The types of chores range from game-like tasks to item delivery. No signs point to towards most chores, although a few, such as our own lava farming chore, are important enough that signs will direct you to them. Or well, usually you just have to ask around to find a job to do. Each core has at least one chore you can do. Many are not repeatable. As with many games, instructions for chores and money earned vary. You can use protos you've earned to buy food for EP recharging in restaurants and items in shops that serve various functions. Your most basic items for are, are ammo for projectile weapons. Most others will not be useful to you, but other Tahago will pay you to deliver them. A few items will aid in your, you in minigames, chores, or even battles. You'll have to discover these on your own. Okoth's shop in Gakoro and the Super Shop in Anokoro are the best places to buy things. When you're in a shop or restaurant, you can select a food or other item and use the arrow keys to say how many you want. Exit the shop or restaurant with the escape key. Uh... Battles. Being an elderly Turaga, I'm not the best person to ask about fighting as a Tahonga. You should ask Doku or Chief Rahi Tamer about basic battle tactics. Every main battle in, in this game features at least one type of less powerful enemy in larger numbers or a single boss at the end of the battle. Besides, continuing the, the story when you beat a boss, you unlock some things as a reward. At least one minigame, a weapon or item, useful in battle, and sometimes more chores. There are also lesser Rahi in the wilderness that can give you trouble. Be on the lookout, Bakuda's Rahi are especially dangerous lately. As you move throughout the storyline, the day progresses. When night falls, you need to sleep. When you, are per when you personally are in Takora, of course, you sleep in your home. When you are visiting other Koros, sleep at the inns. It's easy to tell when it's night. It gets very dark out. When you sleep, you are miss you any missing health is restored, and you will wake up with low energy, so be sure to have breakfast. Uh, Kanohi masks. Uh, oh my goodness. The amount of text, this is so boring. <laughs> Red Kanohi mask powers can be used by Toa, and each power has, to sh has a shape associated with it. Powerless Tahunga masks also come in these shapes. Tahu provided me with a noble Mahiki. I will project illusions of these mask types worn by the Tahunga over my fire. Akaku Mask of Vision lets the user see through walls and see patterns of heat energy. Mask of Hearing increases the user's sense of hearing. Users can wear whispers, hear whispers from miles away. The Amaru. That's new. The Kaleki. Mask of Healing lets the user heal those injuries or, or illnesses that he understands. Mask of Shielding protects the sphere of energy. Protects the sphere of energy that shields the user from physical attacks that the user knows are coming. Inaku Mask of Combination lets the user mix the powers of other Kanohi. Can use up to five other Kanohi at once. Shapes seem to mix with Inako's featureless shape. Kakama the Mask of Speed increases the user's mu muscular speed and brain response, so he can run or, or move very fast. Kaukau Kau, the Mask of Water Breathing allows the user to breathe underwater. Karuku, Karuka, Mask of Deflection, projects a small ball of energy where the user holds his hands that deflects any attack back at the attacker with equal force. Kumataku, Mask of Reverse Breathing, allows the user to breathe in that which is normally breathed out and prevents suffocation in enclosed spaces. What? Mask of Understanding increases the user's mental awareness and ability to understand any puzzle that is solvable by thought. Does not give new knowledge. Okay, Lauku. Miru, Mask of Levitation, lets the user float on a cushion of air. Naluka, Nolako, Mask of Stanima, increases the user's stanima so he can run for miles without getting tired or stay awake through a whole night or two. Fakari, Mask of Strength, gives the user the physical strength to se of several people so he can lift a boulder many times its weight. Rikauri, Mask of Telecommunication, lets the user speak with a person even if that person is many miles away by projecting voices over incredible distances. Roku, the Mask of Memory, allows the user to clearly recall what, is, what has been forgotten or clearly relive past events in the mind. Togao, Mask of Passage, allows the user to pass through thin solid obstacles as if they were merely air. Utatu, Mask of Agility, gives the user acrobatic ability to jump, dodge, bounce, etc. perfectly and quickly. Wahura, Mask of temper Temperature Shielding, shields the user from extreme heat or cold. Uh huh! Noble Kanohi powers can be used by Toa and Turaga, and each power has the shape associated with it. Powerless Tahunga masks also come in these shapes. 
Oh, more of this. Fuel, a mask of duct ductility, it lets the user make targets flexible without interfering with their physical structure. It includes user, user, user and living targets, short range only. Mask of nutrition, can recharge the user's energy slowly without requiring them to eat food. Mask of sound imitation, allows the user to imitate sounds or voices of other beings, objects, or forces of nature, limited volume. Mask of concealment, allows the user to turn invisible for a short amount of time except for the user's window, user's shadow. Jahiru, Mask of Precision, improves hand-eye coordination of the user so he can throw a disc perfectly at a target or draw or sculpt even without inheriting inherent art artistic skills. Okay. Kanuku, Mask of Sleepiness, imposes drowsiness on a target. If the user focuses really hard, he can make weak-minded targets such as Rahi fall asleep. Mask of Slipperiness, Kaun, reduces friction on targeted surfaces. Limited distance can be used to make enemies slip and slide around, hampering their effectiveness in battle. Kihi, Mask of Freezing, can instantly and non-fatally freeze a small target if the user touches the target. Koba, Mask of Mind Control, can project mental commands onto, a t onto target mind from the user. Mahigi, Mask of Illusion, lets the user project illusions such as the illusion I'm projecting now. Matatu, Mask of Telekinesis, lets the user move things with the mind. Weight of targets and, of targets and power of telekinesis depend on the amount of concentration used. Mask Mao, Mask of Silence, enables the user to move without making a single sound. Pahawi, Mask of Adhesion, lets the user make targets sticky, can be used to easily climb walls or make enemies stick to the ground at limited range. Rakati, Mask of Camouflage, lets the user materialize camouflage material on the target, altering the surface appearance and texture of the object, can be reversed or wiped off. Rao, Mask of Translation, allows the user to understand many written language. Mask of Night Vision, Ruru, lets the user see the darkness or night as if it were daylight. Powerless Tonga masks are shaped like great or noble masks and are, are called by the same names Tonga ni Kanohi to remain conscious. Tonga are the inhabitants of the silent. Okay, so it is doing Tahunga, which means it, that's why it's using the language Takaronin. Okay. Tahunga are the inhabitants of the silent. You are one. They come in six types. Each of associated with one of the six elements. Fire, water, stone, earth, ice, and air. Tahunga have no powers and cannot use Kanohi mass powers. They do not. They do have much physical strength, however. Toa are the heroes of our world. They have about twice. They are about as twice as tall as Tahunga and have elemental powers. They can use mass powers and have increased physical strength. Six Toa came here just a few weeks ago, after a thousand years of living on this island with no Toa. They came to fight the evil Makuya and his infected Rahi. They are Tahu, Toa of Fire, Gali, Toa of Water, to Pohatu, Toa of Stone, Anua, Toa of Earth, Kapaka, Toa of Ice, and Liwa, Toa of Air. Taraga are the elders of the villages. I am one. We are slightly taller than Tahunga, but physically much weaker. Our strength is our wisdom, which we use to lead the Tahunga. Turaga can only use noble mass powers. We also have a tiny amount of elemental power. I have enough to light a candle, for example, but this power is very weak. The island is named after the great spirit Matanui. Legends say that Matanui was sent by the great beings to this island long ago. Before he came, the Tahunga were in chaos. He brought order and peace, but his evil brother, Makuta, followed him. Makuta overpowered his brother and cast him into eternal sleep. But Makuta conquered the rocky animals of the island and began trying to conquer the Tahunga. Now the Toa have come to defeat the Makuta and reawaken the Great Spirit, bring peace to our island once again. The island is divided into seven main regions, six devoted to the elements of fire, water, stone, earth, ice, and air. The seventh area is in the center surrounding Ki Nui, the Great Temple. Each of the six elemental areas are called Iwahi. In each, there is a village known as Ikoro. Okay, that was long. Uh... This is so touch sensitive. Oh, I get it. Insert. So the reason why I kept accidentally keep accidentally bring up the menu over and over again, the zero key on the numpad brings up the menu. Okay, I have to reopen the re. I accidentally probably closed the drawbridge.
The Rahi have taken the Trim Prom Pass. No more lava farming up there. Jala wants to see you. Want to give us a hand? A farmer's work is never done. Jala wants to see you. Hello, I'm lava farming. It's the most important job in Matanui. We collect lava and extract special types of propodermis from it. Indeed, too. And then the products from our work are chipped all over the place, especially to Onikoro. In Takora, of course. It's the only safe Koro, you know. What do you mean? Well, I heard the other Kokoronans. The Kokoronans are made out of ice. If you touch them, you'll freeze. Um, are you sure about that? And in Gakoro, they live in giant carnivorous plants. The ocean is full of deadly whirlpools and sharks the size of Matanui. The Likorans are cannibals who ride on giant fire-breathing dragons, and the trees there have heads to try to bite you. In Onikoro, the ground sometimes breaks and you fall off into a bottomless hole. Even worse, Powahi is full of flying rocks which try to smash you. Have you ever been outside of Tawahi? Never, it's too dangerous. Be careful of, well, everything. Atanui is Australia. I forgot where the pump, where the winch lever place is. Here. Let's try this again. Auto jumps. This will progress the story a bit. Fleo! There you are. Hurry inside, you're very late. Who are you? You know, I'm the guard who goes with you and Ka and and Kanoka whenever you ma let map the lava river. Have you lost your memory, just like Takua, or what? Yes, I'm playing. I'm also a player character like Takua. Jala's office. Let's talk to the guys, not Jala first. That's the lava bridge control room. You can raise or lower the bridge into Takoro from there. Cool. There you are, Matt Put Tape Maker. What took you so long to get here? It's like, it's so meta. It like knows I'm gonna do everything besides come here before coming here. I had a strange morning sleeping in so long. Won't happen again, sir. What's going on? We have a problem. The lava farmer Va Vamuka. Vamuka was here earlier today. <sighs> Why did he do this time? Well, you know, I had a stone map here. I was studying it, planning our defensive strategies for the next few months. Suddenly, Vamuka ran in here yelling, Don't worry, Jala, I'll save you. While I was wondering what on Matanui he was trying to save me from, he ran up to my map, flipped it onto its side, and rolled it out into the lava. What? Why? He seemed to think it was some kind of Rahi. That Vamuka, he's so gullible. Somebody probably told him that as a prank. Figures that he act figures that he actually act on it this time. That's why I've called you here, map maker. I am in need of a new map, but you might not have to make a new one from scratch. I won't? I said you might not have to. In Gakoro, there should be an extra map of the whole island. Go there and talk to Kiapohoi. Their map maker. As you probably remember, he led the effort 500 years ago to map the island originally. Without the map, I cannot plan our defenses or keep track of the Rahi. This gives us a huge disadvantage, and I fear we will not be withstand another Rahi attack. Major Rahi attack. Yes, sir. I'll. Kiaponi, you were just we were just talking about you. What could possibly bring you here? Well, villagers of, of fire, I have come to Takoro after a long trial. Tower Karva have attacked our village. It was only thanks to the Takarona named Takua that we are safe now. But during the attack, our library was devastated. Our tablet maps of 
My ingenuity, both copies were destroyed. As the map maker of our village, it is my duty to replace them. Most villages may not need such maps, but we are a boating society. Now all boats except three ferries are grounded. I was hoping I could use your map to copy from. Speaking of which, where is your map exactly? I've, I've heard it was here in your office, Jala. Oh dear, this is terror. This, this is trouble. Our map has been destroyed. It has how? Why? Long story, Hoju. There is no other maps on Machinui on the island, are there? Nope. Not since the loss of the Pokoro copy a few years ago. And both of you are going to have to work on a new map. Takoro is the coordination center for all our land battles against the Rahi. We need a map as much as Gokboro. Okay, we should be rel it should be relatively easy to remap both of our Koro since we still have maps of these Wahi. Let's let's deal with them first. I'll go to Gokoro and collect the small maps of various parts of Gawahi that survived the attack. I'll copy those onto a single Gawahi map. You collect the maps in Tahawahi you have. We'll meet up in Gokoro and go on from there when we're ready. Okay, sounds like a good start. And with Makuto Rizrahi everywhere, I cannot send you without some protection. You want Plino and Ka Ka Kanoka to accompany us, right? Well, Kanoka is our best guard. I think we need him to stay here this time. Your quest, though important to our village, though important to our village, will seem insignificant to Makuto. So take Pla Plano with you. He is perhaps our second most skilled guard next to Kanoka. Plano, join your party. I also want you to train how to defend yourself against Rahi. You will no doubt be going to infest infested areas on your quest, far worse than your typical Lava River mapping expedition. You can train by going into the main hallway and finding the Rahi Taming Center. Talk to Dokoi, the Rahi Tamer. He will train you. Kanyopi. Well, I'd rather get going. Please hurry, Hoju. May the flames of Takoro protect you. Oh my goodness. <sighs> Hello, if you're here for Dukoi, he's that way. Hello, Hujo. Do you want to train to fight Rahi? I am Dukoi, Takoro's chief Rahi tamer. I am responsible for the training and upkeep of all of our captured and tamed Rahi. Rahi are the animals of Matanui. Most are wild and dangerous, but some will catch we catch and train. Takoro is the main villager Rahi are trained. Rahi are brought in from all over Matanui to these chambers. Sometimes Rahi have infected masks on ta on them. When a Rahi has an infected mask on, they will they are under Makuta's control. Lately, more and more Rahi are mysteriously being infected. I don't need any training. I'll just watch. Let's begin here. To begin then, I will walk you through three training exercises in which you will fight Rahi that have been trained specifically for this. The form of fighting I'm about to teach you is really very simple. All you have to do is punch the Rahi before it bumps you. You punch by moving next to the Rahi and pressing enter or space. Make sure you are facing the Rahi or it won't work. If you do it quickly enough, you will deflect its attack and weaken it slightly. It can seem challenging at first, but it becomes easy once you get the hang of it. One of the best tactics is to simply to keep punching repeatedly when the Rahi is near you. Okay, now it's time to give it a try. Unlike the Rahi you will face in the wilderness, this trained Hotobrog will not hurt you. It will merely push you back if you bump it. Uh, don't worry, you will, not, you will not harm the Hoto. When you punch the Hoto three times, it will retreat, burrowing into the ground with flames. You need to hear the instructions again. If you need to hear the instructions again, just press enter or space on the gate, and I will repeat them.
Oh, I think I kind of get... Okay. I wasn't getting it. Um... Good. Now for a horror challenge. Come with me. You have to punch it where... Your, I, this exercise is a little bit harder. The Hoto will injure you if you let it bump you. Its route is also less predictable. Punch the Hoto five times to win. If you get too injured, I will heal you. Okay. Starting to get this. Or, or not. There we go. But now it's time for you for a much more difficult challenge. Come with me. Next you'll face Twaka Ja, a highly trained po Pobaka. This is the final challenge of your training. For now, he is in his... Uh, there's no backlog? Oh no, there's no backlog on this. Twaka's battle tactics are much more advanced than those of the Hoka Hoto bugs you faced before. You will have to constantly adjust your own strategy. Like the second Hoto bug, Twaka will injure you, but he knows when your health is too low. When it is, he will begin merely pushing you when he bumps you. I will not be healing you when you get injured this time. I'll train you to heal yourself once you've won. Twaja is also invulnerable to punches, so you are not actually injuring him when you hit him. However, I have trained him to act as if you he was injured and count how many times you hit him. When you hit him 20 times, he will retreat into his shell and you will have one. Time to get started, good luck. Uh...
getting my butt handed to me so hard. So one of these kind of things where you think I'm not understanding the controls if it's if I can't land any punches. Like if I let it get too close to me, they'll just bot me, so I can't like punch him, right? So I have to do it somewhat before where he's kind of farther away. stupid. No, I didn't do anything. <laughs> now you're down to 36 health. You do not even know how to heal yourself, something that will be important in fighting. First let, first let me explain the system. If you go to the menu, you will see an area labeled HP next to your name. This stands for health points. Healthiest level is 100. This is also an area labeled EP, which stands for energy points. Thinner level is 200. You can spend energy to heal. You can turn on a health bar that displays your current member's health in the lower left of your screen. Go to the pause menu actions to do so. Now to heal, you simply press the zero button. Try it now. Good, heal often during, your, during and after battle. Now you need to recharge your EP level as well. This is easy to do. EP is recharged simply by eating. Go to, go to your menu and go to items. Click on a food item. You'll, it'll recharge some of your EP. You do not have any food. Pick some up at the table over there. For now, I won't charge for it. You can buy food on all the cor coros as well. You'll need, need, need to during your journey. Keep your EP levels as high as you can during battles for fast healing. Each food's description tells you how much it recharges. And if you need to hear this again, press the enter space on me. Try it now. Okay. You picked up a slice of hot of fire bread. Oh, escape just escape is the normal menu, and then insert is the okay. Sure. Okay. It's a menu, energy pack, food item, hit it. And okay.
Okay, I kind of get it. Good. Remember to check your HP and EP levels during the battle often. Don't forget to recharge it or you could be defeated. You should also watch your party's members' health and EP. They can be damaged as well. If any of their health set gets too low, a warning will appear telling you to heal. Pressing zero heals everyone in your party. Congratulations, you have now passed your fight your fight training. Feel free to return anytime and train again. Would you like to turn your health on your health bar now? Yes, I would. That's a small health bar. Okay, now that we've trained, we need to pick up the Takora map in the Takora library. The Tawaki map in the Takora library. Okay. This is really bad value. Okay. So that's about one for one. That's about two for one. That sucks. Sucks. Very good. Okay. Sucks. Eh. Sucks. Good. So this is 15 for 10, so 3 to 2. Wait, so why would you get anything else besides this? library. No, it's farming. Here we go, Huju's Compendium of Maps. Let's see, I want a copy of the Tawahi map. Here it is. Good thing I always make several backups of each map. Of course, so many Lao farmers check these maps out so often, there needs to be many copies. But I also think it's good to have backups just in case. Slayo, a wise procedure. Shh, it's the library.
Okay. What do I do after I get the map? Bro, is there like a quests menu? Oh, yes there is, okay. It's the minus sign, I forgot. Go to Gakoro, head south across the lava bridge, out of Takoro, then head east along the path to the Gakoro ferry boat, okay. You may pass. Hello, Hujo. Warning, west of the sign is the charred forest. It is very easy to get lost in the forest. Stay out. Okay. Why did I... I am practicing. Why are you practicing? I am practicing the art of traveling far by moving very slow. How does that work? There is no difference between moving slow and fast. If you can move slow enough, you are already where you want to be. So, where do you want to be? Right here. This is the charred forest. Once it was green and lush, but Makuta's Rahi burned it. Burned it. But I like it better this way. How do I get out? Why would you want to get out? I think it's nice here. But you really must just head north. Oh, okay. Cool. Want to play Ignalu Lava Surfing? Sure. How do you play that? Lava surfing is Tahu's most popular sport. The contestants stand in a lava-proof surfboard and surf down a lava river, trying to reach the finish line first. If you race, I and Magla, Magya will walk you with you to the highest safe point of the lava river. The finish line is where the lava meets the ocean. To race, you will need to hold down the right arrow key and use up and down to steer. There are many spots in the river where the lava is sped up by a special, dev a special device. Surf over those spots to get a short burst. You will need to hit those spot boosts to pull ahead of us, so try to surf over as many as possible. In the hard version, there are also many controlled lava geysers, which slow you down. You want to avoid them. The award for placing first on the easy level is 300 protos, 600 low protos on the hard level. This is, there's no reward for second or third place. Yes. Um, we'll do easy. Okay, let's try this. Okay, so it goes to the right, but really it's just like you just go, you just go where you want to go. Like it's not like it goes to the right. It's not like the, the, like the directions were wrong. Okay, well.
Okay, well, if getting if getting photos is that easy, if I can just repeat this, wow, I can really grind. Okay, so this isn't like Mino where making money is like really a pain in the butt. You can do it rather easily here. Okay. I think it was mean old. It's really troll with making money. Cool, let's try the hard version. Just so we can get wiped out. Well. Okay. Okay, well, let's hold off a bit for now on that. Let's walk around the beach a bit and see like kind of what's there. Okay. Is there like an Easter egg like hidden way in the boondocks out here? No, not really. Okay. Just wasted space. I'm Naka. I own the Gakoro Ferry Boat Line. Would you like to go to Gakoro? Yes. Oh, this music, why? <laughs> Hi there, the gate is closed right now, and I, well, I lost the key. Could you help me find it, please? Why do you need a key? We used, to, we used to use a system of weights as a lock, but too many land rocky just kept stepping on it and getting in. So we ch changed the lock so it needs a key. The problem is I keep losing it. Great. Is this really like the uh, the gawk horror music though? I thought this was like the, the leak horror music.
There you are. Kind of busy in here. Kind of a crab shack. Oh. Okay, so they do damage. But is there anything worth like looking at? No, not really. Okay, it's just a bunch of like stuff to fight. If I were to fight it, which I won't, because why would I? <laughs> What's up here? Man, these things are just, they just don't, okay. Yeah, I've lost some health because of this, these crabs, okay. I give up, it's not down here, I must have, oh, you found it, yippee. Do you want the gate open now? Yes. Okay. Come, Tarago no Kama wants to speak with you, I'll lead you to her hut. Hi, Hujo. Thanks again for helping me find the key. Welcome, villagers of fire, Hoju and Tlenok. Tleno. Clea Pohi has told me of the predicament you are here to begin resolving. Have you brought the map of Tawahi? Yes, I have, Taraga. Good. Clea Pohi's search was almost as successful. After searching the wreckage left by the Tar Carvai, he told me that the map of Gawahi was destroyed. However, he had backup maps of each of the smaller regions that make up Galahi. All but one of them has been recovered. He is currently in his hut copying the smaller maps into a single central one. What of the map he didn't find? At first we thought it had been destroyed, but after a few minutes ago, but just a few minutes ago, Holly, a villager here, saw it underwater. Unfortunately, however, while we were trapped in the hut by the Tower Carva, it seems a giant underwater rahi called it Loraka moved over it. Loraka are slow moving starfish like Rahi who love a certain type of seaweed that happens to grow right in that spot. They also eat very slowly, so I'm afraid it's not going anywhere on its own anytime soon. Its mouth is pressing down directly on the tablet, so nobody can simply swim in and grab it. Someone will need to scare it away. All of our villagers are too busy to deal with it right now, so you two will have to do it. To do that, you'll need to obtain air bladders so you can breathe underwater. I'm not sure if there are any extras left, Okama. The Tar Carva destroyed many of the air of our air bladders. True, the villagers who would normally make more are also busy repairing damaged huts at the moment. However, perhaps this problem can be can be can be the solution to our other major problems. Guareri happens to have two extra air bladders she won't be using for a few days. Guareri is in charge of the farming of new lily pads, which are replanted here to replace damaged lilies or the leaves they leaves used for huts or pathways. Every once in a while, a rat or two shows up and begins eating lily pads. While we were trapped in the hut, ten of them invaded. 
One Leaf Fieri rat is a problem is problem enough, but Tin would eat all the new pads in mere days, and it will be some time before we have time to deal with them. So this is my order. Clear out the Leaf Fieri rats from the lily pad growth center, and the air bladders will be your payment. Once you have completed that, go to the underwater ladder hut. Gali is working on, on repairs there. She'll explain how to deal with the Loraka. Okay. Go to Lily Path Growth Center. The Growth Center is at the easternmost part of Gakoro. Okay, how long have I been recording this? Like an hour and a half? I'm gonna stop- I'm gonna save the game and I'm gonna record doing that just to make sure it gets on record I saved. And then I'm gonna come back to this later. This is really slow moving and boring, but uh... Oh no, hopefully it'll get good. Okay, good. And then I'll exit. Yes. Cool.